Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Kika Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. We're going to be working on our iPod again. So let me move this thing over. I'm going to come over here to a front view where I can see my little dial wheel here. Come over here to lines, create circle from center. I'm going to come right here in the middle and dial out, dial in a, uh, a circle there. And that's good. I'm just going to try to center it as best I can eyeball it. And I'm going to come over here to Vertex Modeling, Sweep Surface, and I'm just going to use my radial function. I'm just going to dial in a, a, uh, an inner circle here to make our little button there when we go to do that. Come back to Perspective View. There we are. I'm going to come over here to Select Faces, Control A to select all those. I'm just going to sweep backwards to, uh, no, I'll sweep upwards here to create uh, some thickness to my wheel. And that looks good. I think what I will probably want to do is close off the back of it here. Like that. I'm going to select that little um, interface there. I'm going to... Uh, extract it well okay maybe not okay what I'll do is I will select this little inner ring and loop that and I will come over here to lines ex curve extraction now what I want to do is make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use my ra uh, ratio setting over here. And I'll probably change this to 30. No, nope. let's make it 900. Just to make it slightly uh, smaller than in what's inside. So I like that. Now I'm going to come over here to Vertex Modeling. And I'm going to sweep that inwards like that. I'm going to close off the top and the bottom, just like that. What I will do is I will bring it up just a little bit. I know that's a little bit more than what I want, but I want to apply a little bit of a chamfer to this. And then I'll put it back down. So let me grab my chamfer tool, zoom in, and I'll uh, select a range of 4. 24, I think this should be good. And now I'll bring it down. And I don't want it flush because I want it to be obvious that it is just slightly sticking out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to select these two items not my group, those two items, I'll weld them together. Call this wheel. I guess I could come over here and ungroup this now. And I'll select my wheel, use my lay on tool and lay it right on there. It's centered on there. Now I just need to bring it down so I'll come over here to a front view wireframe. I guess I want to select my wheel. There it is. Let's see how that looks. It could come up a little bit. Of course now I lost the uh, left and right centering of it. I think I'll undo that and just bring it up a little bit. Let's see how that works. Oh, the leads come up a little bit more. Let's see how that is. There we are. Okay. Now that's centered in there. I will come back to perspective. And let's congratulate ourselves and admire our work. Okay, I do want to add just a slight little bevel to this. So I'll select that edge, loop it, come over here to chamfer. 
I guess a range setting of four uh, will be nice. There we are, I like that. That looks good. Okay, I'll just, oops. Select my wheel. And I'll just bring it in there just like that. Let me look at my original one. I forget if I um, did a Boolean cut into it. I don't remember now. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Okay. So, I will just lower this down. There we are. I like that. File, save. Okay, I'm going to select all my objects there, group them together, and let's slide it over and compare it to our actually this is our This is the one we just did. So let's compare these two. And they look, uh, they look darn similar. They, uh, there's one thing I want to do. And that is, um, I want to separate the back from the front of the iPod. When I, um, in between the first and the second tutorial I was playing around with it and I had saved my progress and unfortunately um, I had to recreate it all over again and I failed to separate the back from the front like I demonstrated in the first tutorial so I'm going to do that right now and I'll be right back okay so I've got a separate back piece from the front and we are ready now to create a, um, let me select my wheel, and we're going to create a UV map for this. Come over to my UV and paint tab. Come over here, split screen. And I'm just going to apply a planar projection to it. And I don't want to see my texture here, so I will hide that. Now there is something that is, um, something I'll show you. You know, uh, on this iPod, there is some depth to this wheel here. Whoops. There is some thickness to it. I will loop that. And so what we need to do, and it's, it's really not critical because we're not going to be doing any part of the UV on this uh, on this side edge here, but I will just drag it out a little bit, be a little more precise, okay, select all of those and bring them in here so that they fit within the boundaries of our UV map, and that's good. If you're wondering where this uh, checkerboard pattern came from, you may want to see some of my earlier tutorials on UV mapping. It's simply a texture checker pattern and uh, you can refer to some of the other tutorials that are, go into a little bit further uh, explanation as to what it's for, what it came from, and its purpose. So I'm happy with the layout of my UV map here for my wheel. So I'm just going to save my UV map, UV, uh, let's call it wheel, UV map. And I think it saves it as a PNG. So let me re-enable the visibility of all of these. And let's save our progress. And I'm going to export this to my desktop. 
and let's just call it iPod. I'll save that. Save. Here's a uh, render of a, uh, an earlier one I made. I rendered this in view, so these are this is kind of the uh, results that we can expect to achieve by the time we're finished with this project. I never finished it or put anything on the screen. It was just uh, I had done some rough modeling, uh, UV mapped the wheel, and then uh, rendered it just to see the progress. As you see over here, I still have this line across the face of the screen that I never took care of because I never finished it. It was just to get a rough idea on the, the progress I was making. But we fixed that already, so we know we won't have that problem. All right, so I'm going to come over here in Photoshop. So with Photoshop open, I'm just going to drag my map right into Photoshop. And there she is. Let me bring my window in to fit my video here. Okay, let's see what size uh, image it created. It's pretty small, but it'll work. All right, I'm going to create a new layer, and I want to come over here to my text tool. Okay, the font I'm going to use is Myriad Pro, and I think it comes with uh, Photoshop. And I'm just going to hit my uppercase letters, and I'm going to type in Menu. And uh, let me undo that. I want to select a gray color. Now, you know what? Nope, 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 nope. I'm going to do black. Because uh, it doesn't matter when we bring it into view. We can make it however we want. We can change its color and view. So I'll just make it uh, this color for now. Okay, I think to make life a little easier for myself, I'm going to bring in my reference image here so that I can uh, create my UV map to mimic what we've got over here in uh, according to the real one. So let me just scale this up. get rid of all the excess. Oop, almost there. Almost there. Uh, we're beginning on it. Let me trim off the excess again. lower the uh, opacity of it. come up a little bit more. Okay. Let me drop that behind it. Okay, menu definitely needs some work. And make it a little bit larger. Okay, there we are. Now, um, if you need to, you might want to click on bold here, uh, like mine's on bold, and I think it looks a little bit nicer. 
Okay, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to come over here to Shapes, Custom Shapes, and they have in um, Photoshop here, they have a nice little arrow that works perfectly. It's this little fellow right here. Let me zoom in and create a uh, arrow of the proper shape. guess that will work. Let me duplicate that. Oh, let me commit that change. Duplicate that. There we go. And I'm just going to create a, a rectangle here. I needed to do that on a new layer. A rectangle. Let me see how it is height wise. It's a little tall. Let me bring it, let me scale it down to match the same height as my buttons. There we are. Move it over. And it looks to be a little thick. Okay, I'm just going to pause it right here, and I'm going to finish doing uh, copying them and arranging them on my UV map. I'll be right back. All right, so I've arranged them on here. I uh, changed the uh, blending mode of my uh, iPod wheel so I can see a little bit better. Let me now resize it a little bit more accurately. That looks good. Now I can select my layers that could come down, these could come down, and that means the other ones next to it could also come down. And menu can come down. Let me click off of that. Yeah, menu can come down and over a little bit. There we are. Okay, I'm going to hide that. I'm going to create a new layer right above my background layer. And I'm going to fill it with white, Alt-Delete because this will be a alpha map that we will use in view. So I like this. Let me save this to my desktop. I'll just save it as a JPEG. Wheel UV map alpha. And I'll save this whole file as well as a PSD, just in case I need to come back to it. Okay, we are finished with this tutorial, and in the last one, um, we will be bringing it into view, applying our UV map to it, and rendering it. So, thanks for watching here at Geek of Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.